Support for Docs Outside the Box comes from Set for Life Insurance. Set for Life means set for less. Their clients get access to the largest portfolio of discounts and unisex rates available nationwide. Check them out at setforlifeinsurance.com and tell them Dr. Darko sent you. I always say, if you know what your audience's challenges are, build content that helps them beat those challenges. That's the number one thing. Like if you can help someone fix a problem, that's like the biggest tenant of sales. Good sales people help you fix your problem. Welcome to Doc's Outside the Box Podcast. This is your official show, looking inside the minds of cutting edge and innovative doctors. Think you'll find these stories in any medical textbook? Sorry, you're getting real live insight from men and women pushing the envelope beyond medicine. Ordinary doctors doing extraordinary things. Let's start now with your host, Dr. Nee Darko. Hey docs, are you looking to learn how to become a physician leader? Then Physician CEO is for you. Physician CEO is an accelerated business immersion program designed for physicians and developed by MBA faculty from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. So learn more at www.physician-ceo.com forward slash D-O-T-B. What's going on, everyone? This is Dr. Nee, your host. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Docs Outside the box. This is going to be a great one. This is going to be the first of many episodes where I feature hosts from some great podcast that I listen to, podcasts that I listen to on the regular and really learn a lot from. Now, I've been thinking about doing something like this for some time, but I just really never took action for so many different reasons. But The biggest holdup really was I didn't think you all were really interested in something like this or you all really cared. And initially I thought, well, look, this is my own journey. This is the podcast that I listen to. But the more and more I listen to podcasts, I really started to realize that, you know, whether you're in the medical field or not, whatever podcast you listen to, whatever field you're listening to, you know, there's just these themes that seem to be really taking over, which is motivation career freedom, happiness, these things, you know, are just kind of really universal to whatever podcast that you listen to. And it's really universal to what everybody wants. It's really straightforward, but, you know, I just wanted you all to really understand that when I listen to podcasts, I'm not just listening to podcasts within the medical field. I'm listening to podcasters who are not in my field. And I actually learn a lot more from them. I get really motivated from their stories. And today's guest is going to motivate you to get off that fence and go ahead and create something, whether that means starting to blog, you were scared to write, or even that podcast, going ahead and starting that podcast, but thought just because you really weren't good at public speaking, you couldn't do it. My next guest is Raina Campbell from the very popular show, Dreams and Drive podcast. Now, those who are not familiar with Dreams and Drive podcast. This is a podcast that is geared towards creatives, towards lifestyle entrepreneurs who really want to learn how to kind of take their dreams out of park and into drive, kind of similar to ours a little bit. But each week she is talking to successful creatives, lifestyle entrepreneurs who are going to share their own stories of success and what they use to help them along the way. And when I say very popular, her show is extremely popular. It's been featured on Apple Podcasts, front page, multiple times. And I can't front, I'm a little jealous of that. She's written for Huffington Post. She's written for Madame Noir. And she's really making a name for herself as a storyteller and being able to get some heavy hitters, some actors, actresses, musicians, even some highly successful entrepreneurs on her show. So today you're going to hear from Raina on why you should be literally getting off your butts right now and podcasting right now. Some of the things that you'll learn in this episode include, what's it gonna be like when you first start your podcast? We're gonna talk about some of the mistakes that she made, how to embrace your statistics, whether you have one download, five, 10, 400, or even a thousand, and how to take action from that, how to start interviewing people, how to reach out to guests when you've never interviewed before, when you've never had any guests, when you don't even have a website. I even get a chance to share my most embarrassing moment podcasting. 
You're also going to learn what podcasting has done for her confidence. And last but not least, she's going to tell us all the different benefits from podcasting that you all can get right now, including being asked to go to different conferences, different events, and being able to be asked to cover them as media or even being able to drive new cars on a daily basis. Pretty cool, huh? So this is going to be a really good interview. Make sure you get out there and share this interview with those who you think would benefit from this. And without further ado, I present Raina Campbell. Raina Campbell from the Dreams and Drive podcast. What's up? What's good? Welcome to Docs Outside the Box. Hey, me. Thank you for having me on today. I'm so excited. Yeah, I am really excited to have you on. This is something that has been in the making for a while, but because of scheduling, we just couldn't make it happen. But I just wanted to have you on the show because I wanted to talk to you about all the great things that podcasting has done for you. I've watched you while you were actually ascending up and you still are ascending up, but to see all the things that have happened through podcasting, it's been really amazing. So I thought maybe have you on the show and come and talk to the audience about how powerful podcasting is, all the different things that you can do with it, and then just kind of just go from there and kick it. All right. Well, I'm ready for it. You know, I've been waiting for this conversation for a while. So let's see where it goes. And I hope that I'm able to help your audience just learn about the possibilities out there, especially if they want to choose podcasting as a realm they want to go down. Awesome. Awesome. So look, full disclosure, let's be real. Because you've been doing so well with your podcast, we work together. I actually hired you to help me make my podcast a lot more systematic, help my podcast just a lot more professional. And I have to say that it definitely worked wonders for me. So that's one thing I just want the audience to know is that we have that type of professional relationship. All right, yeah. And you were a great client to have. And I'm excited about your journey and just about this platform, this community that you're building. So let's get to know you a little bit. So you're host the podcast Dreams and Drive. Basically, you are a lifestyle entrepreneur, but obviously a lot more in depth than that. But let's hear a little bit more about your background. Where are you from? When did you start this podcast? Let's take it back about two years ago, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right. So just two years ago. But first off, I am Raina. I'm from Orange, New Jersey. I want to call it, it's like an urban suburb of Newark. (laughs) It's like a small part. I don't know if you ever heard of Orange being described as that. So I'm a Jersey girl, went to Princeton, graduated, thought I would have this big media job and it just didn't happen. So I was always interested in media, telling stories. And I was like, you know what? I could create my own media job. And so that's when I started doing a lot of freelance writing. I was interviewing female entrepreneurs for Madame Noir, which is a female lifestyle site for Black women. And I was interviewing all these entrepreneurs, putting out these great, in my opinion, great, you know, profile interviews. And I just felt like nobody was reading like a 2000 word interview, right? Mm. So this was in late 2015. And I remember I was interviewing this one guy because at this point I had started my own interview series or my personal blog, RainaCampbell.com, and it was called Brandmakers. And I was interviewing this guy called Nate Hope Sapple. And we were just talking about like, what's the new trends? And he's like, you know, podcasting is going to be big. And I told him how I wanted to start a podcast. And I gave him like a whole laundry list of excuses. And he was like, well, what's stopping you? And I was like, that's a good question, Nate. What were the excuses that you were using at that point? You know, I didn't know how to do it. I've never podcasted before. I don't have an audience. And he told me that. There were a lot of people who were not as smart as me who were out here building things and making money doing it. And he's like, just do it. Just cut the excuses and just figure out how you're going to get it done. And that was like, if you could think about the moment that could push you forward, that was the moment for me that really made me realize that I was holding myself back. I put a date on it. I'm like someone who likes like even starts. So I said, January 1st, 2016, I'm going to launch the podcast. Mind you, this was August 2015. I had no idea what it (laughs) took to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. But with hard work and with a lot of research and just being committed to that goal, January 1st, Dreams in Drive was launched and I've just been building it ever since. So in the beginning, my dream was, I never imagined that I would make it this far. The vision was still the same, right? I wanted to interview people about how they built their brands, how they took their dreams out of parking into drive. And in the beginning, the show was actually called No Parking. I remember Because I had this Mm -hmm. whole thing like, keep going, don't give up. And I was obsessed with this picture that I thought was a sign. You know, me uh, (laughs) standing in front of a no parking sign. 
So it took me a few, maybe 30 episodes. And I'm like, let me just use Dreams and Drive, the hashtag, as the actual podcast name. And since then, it has just grown to be more than I ever could imagine. At the time of this interview, we just released our 160th episode. We're two years and seven months in, had over, I want to say maybe like over 140 guests. We've been on iTunes podcast feature, like a bunch of times for Apple podcasts. It's just been so great, me. As you have probably seen, like, it has definitely been a journey, though. Oh, yeah, it's definitely been a journey. But also at the same time, it's been really fun to see. I mean, you just mentioned being featured on the front page of Apple Podcasts or in numerous features of Apple Podcasts multiple times, which, you know, for most podcasters, that's like the mama, I done made it moment, right? (laughs) You know, so that's been really impressive. So tell us, so like, this is not your main gig though, right? Doing a podcast, like you do other things. Like what do you do primarily from your nine to five? Just so we can kind of get a hint at what you normally do. I graduated with a degree in sociology. As you know, that really means nothing unless I want to be a professional sociologist, (laughs) which I didn't want to be. So right now I work nine to five in marketing at an e-commerce fulfillment company. So for the past uh, four years, I've really been diving deep into content marketing, content automation, email automation. Basically, my job is to help our sales team fill our sales pipeline. So for anyone who doesn't know marketing or sales speaks, basically, I have to help the sales team find people to close sales. So that's been my job. In it, I've learned so much about how to build an audience, what it takes to retain an audience, how do you create language that your audience then wants to take a specific action on, how do you build email campaigns that are targeted towards your audience's needs. So I really had I guess in my nine to five, had a crash course in, I want to say marketing automation, but also is what drives people's behaviors and then right. how do you create actions and how do you create spaces for them to take action and you can get the results that you want. So that's like my nine to five. Outside of nine to five, I do dreams and drive, but I've also just am a very creative, very visual person. I love art. I love dance. So those are all the different other parts of me as well that I think you can tell and that are influence. You can see the influence in the Dreams and Drive show. The stuff that you were talking about with marketing and the email campaigns, all those different things. Like for me, that's like one of the more painful parts of podcasting, but are so very necessary. What do you think? You you can't do anything if you don't know sales and marketing, especially if you are a solopreneur, meaning you don't have a team. I always tell people if you're starting out by yourself, Read sales, learn how to be a good salesperson, because then you could do anything, honestly. (laughs) Well, look, you're fairly young in your career, right? But obviously, you have abundant knowledge. You have a huge, huge following with your podcast. Let's talk about like when you first started your podcast, right? Let's talk about some of the pitfalls, some of the detours that you may have had to take. What was it like first starting your podcast? What was it like finding guests? What was it like from a mental standpoint, trying to talk to people? And you're very young, trying to teach people about, you know, being positive, telling stories. Like, tell us about how it was when you first started. Hmm. I think I was naive. I think Mm. I was just so pumped up from like when Nate was like, what's stopping you? And I was like, nothing's stopping me. I'm going to go out here and kill it. And I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. So it's kind of like when you launch something. And if I didn't know that 50 downloads an episode wasn't good, I probably would stop, right? So my first episode, I think... Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on, hold on. It's like 50 episodes? Is... No, 50 Let's downloads. 50 downloads, that's what I got. No, I'm teasing. Let's move on. Let's move on. Because <laughs> you know there are people who yeah. have that, right? Or even to get that, you know, so... You know, I'm just saying that, let's say in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever my number was in the beginning, it probably wasn't what you would call the best. Right. But mm-hmm. I was just so excited about it that that fueled me. And I didn't know that, you know, most podcasts have like, the popular podcast, they're having like 30, 40,000 downloads per episode on the first day. So for me, yeah. it was just like, you know what? I had 20 downloads, 50 downloads. I'm famous. People love it. Like it's so much because I've never done it before. What was mm-hmm. that feeling like just knowing? Cause I mean, you're way past that number, right? But yeah. like literally like just, what does that feel like to just to have like five downloads or just to have someone that you don't know is listening to your podcast. You don't know how they feel about it. You don't know what action you're taking about it. They could be listening multiple times. Like, what did that feel like? Talk to the audience about that. 
it was affirming. And at the same time, it was exciting yeah. because I'm someone who likes, and you know what? One of the reasons why I started Dreams and Drive and did it, I started a whole new website, although I had RainaCampbell.com, is I was excited about building something from scratch. I really wanted to see, like my whole model going in was, I've never been consistent with anything before, right? <laughs> like I'll start something, I'll stop it. Like I'm very scatterbrained at times. But I know that if I want to be organized and be disciplined and be consistent, I could and that I could see results because that's what everyone was always telling me. Like, you have to be consistent if you want to see results. So I said, all right, I'm going to be consistent and let's see if this consistency thing actually works. So for me, I was like challenging myself. It was like a weekly competition that I was having with me and me just to see, could I beat last week's numbers? What could I do to get more listeners in? So I was so committed to wanting results and seeing how much community I could build from scratch. Cause I really started from zero. Mm. You know, I am um, oftentimes I'm not at where you're at in terms of episode numbers, but would love to be very soon. But oftentimes like the first five, six, maybe even like the first 20 guests, I really, really appreciate them because a lot of them said yes, when I didn't have a website, particularly I didn't have anything out. Like how did you convince your first couple of guests to really jump on board? and interview you when you didn't really have much at all. You didn't have much of a pedigree. So I started with people that I knew. So the first Mm, guest was um, actually like my neighbor from down the street that has lived on my street my entire life. And I didn't meet him until maybe three months prior through one of my best friends. And he had a studio in his house. So in the beginning, he was supposed to be like the co-host producer. And I didn't really want to have a co-host or producer, (laughs) but I didn't tell him that. So he kind of helped me in the beginning. And then there was a mutual friend that we knew. I think what helped me was that I had a strong network beforehand. So I had been immersed in the lifestyle media space before. So I kind of just went through my LinkedIn and my Rolodex and was like, who do I know that has an audience that I could leverage, that I have a close enough relationship that I can also leverage? And the key to me is in the beginning, Raina, you got to take who's available. You got to take who is willing to want to help you grow. Like I can't be choosy. But at the same time, I also was so naive that I just pitched people that I didn't know either, like the budget nista. Oh, yeah. She Tiffany, the budget nista. Yeah, Tiffany Aliche. I never met her, but we did have a mutual friend, Dawn Fitch, who I kind of, I think I mentioned her in my email to her and she was excited and she was an early uh, yes. And she's somebody who I didn't know. She's someone who we had never communicated with before, but I think because I was so excited about the brand. We were a few episodes in already, so it wasn't like I was experimenting with her. I think because I had a credible background, I had written for Madame Noir, written for Huffington Post. I had my own blog that she could go and see. I had something to show her, so she felt like I was credible. Hmm. And that's kind of how I got those early guests. It was more of just, who do I know? How many pitch emails can I get? Or how many pitch emails can I send until I get a yes? That was like my process. And now a word from our sponsor. Understanding how to run a business in medicine will put you at a unique advantage in the future. Whether it's leading a hospital, practice, or starting a new venture, the Physician CEO program will put you in focus from day one. Physician CEO is an accelerated business immersion program developed by MBA faculty from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. The Physician CEO program provides an intensive MBA style education made up of modules, with each module covering topics from leadership, to entrepreneurial ventures. Because of their individualized structure, each participant leaves the program with their one, three, and even five-year business plan, all designed to function in the real world. If you're a physician who is looking to start your own venture, lead your practice or department, or even start planning for succession out of medicine, then you can't afford to miss this opportunity. Class is filling up. Learn more at www.physician-ceo.com forward slash D-O-T-B. So what was the biggest or most embarrassing thing that you did with a guest during a podcast, during like your first early episodes? I'll share mine real quick. So mine was, I was (laughs) interviewing. So so basically, I think it was like episode 20 or episode 30. I can't remember, but I was interviewing someone and this person was running for office and this was a great episode. And She's like literally like been on multiple news outlets. She's been featured in so many different various, you know, media. 
interviewing her and get into like the 30th minute and 45th minute and like, you know, I'm like, wait, I did not hit record. Right. And I was like, oh my God. So there's like this feeling of sweat, feeling of just like all of a sudden, like sweat just beating on my forehead. And she's talking and I'm just looking at her like, I don't know if I should tell her that we should stop. (laughs) Should I keep going? (laughs) You know, but eventually I stopped her and I said, let's just, you know, look, I apologize. I didn't hit record. I'm sorry. Like, I know we had a good how many, chemistry. How many minutes were you into it? I was like 45 minutes into this. But it's just one of those, <laughs> look at your face. You know, it's just one of those things that just happens. But she was really cool. And we recorded the week after that. And, you know, I just kind of just gave her some of the tips or some of the things that we talked about. And she remembered it. And we just took it from there. And it was great. So I liken that to like, with you, did anything like that happen to you? Anything worse? Anything, you know, tell us what it was like when you first started. I'm trying to think. It seems so far ago. That's why I'm like scrolling through my episodes now to see if there's a story that I can remember. I don't think anything embarrassing in that realm because I'm like a super duper like double check, have my checklist, got to make sure that's all there. I did have one guest that was eating the entire time Mm -hmm. and I could tell that the guest was eating and I wanted to say like, stop eating so bad. And it was just something like that was a lesson for me in the beginning that if you hear something, you have to be assertive, even with your guests, or you mm-hmm. even have to just be willing to tell your guests when something is not going to be good for the show. And I didn't do that. And it's still to date. It's an episode that I think had a lot of potential that I just think because I could tell he was like on his phone and he was like doing a lot of other things. It didn't turn out to be as you know, good as I wanted it to be. So I think from a production standpoint, And just putting it out there, I wasn't as proud of it because I felt like it was my fault and I should have stood up for something that I knew would have helped it in the long term. So when did you start to realize that or when did you have your quote unquote like, oh, snap, like this podcast has taken off. Like this is, you know, something that people really, really like. When did that occur? Hmm. I want to say I had guessed. One of my early guests, episode six guest, Akita Holly, she had her own podcast that was very popular, Hashtags and Stilettos. And she reshared it. And I got so much traction from it. I was like, wow, people think I'm a good interviewer. People like my show. And so for me, that was a moment for me to say, all right, Raina, you may not have as many downloads as you think, you know, all these other popular podcasts are having. But people like your voice and people like your interview style. So that's something that you should just keep with. And then I think my first Apple podcast feature, which was episode 32 with Jeff and Kaliza. Wow. Bolivar, 32 episodes Bolivar. in. 32 episodes in, you already yeah. got featured by Apple Pie. That's what's up. That's really cool. I think me being able to convince the, it was iTunes at that, at that point, it was still called iTunes, you know, to convince him to feature me on the show. And I was only seven months in at that point, made me realize that, wow, like Apple thinks that this is a good idea. Maybe, (laughs) maybe, you know, girl, you can go be something. Keep going with this. I think that was like the first point where I was like, wow, this is good. (laughs) Now, let's talk about some of the opportunities that have occurred through podcasting, because a lot of people, they want to interview big people or they want to interview anybody. Like, talk to us about like what podcasting has done for you, for your career, for your confidence. I think, you know, I've always been somebody who has loved storytelling and I've always felt like I had a voice, but I didn't really think about my voice may not be through written word. And for so much of my career, I was blogging, I was doing video, which is still my voice, but it's visual and audio. So you're not really always focusing on the voice so much. And I think I had been like searching for what is my thing? What is my voice? What is the thing that really helps me connect with other people? And so being able to find this platform that I think in 2016, it was starting to be on the rise. So it wasn't necessarily as popular as it is now. It made me realize that like, we have stories out here that need to be told. And maybe my thing is my voice. Maybe I could use my voice as a way to tell those stories. So for me, it really just gave me confidence in my gift. Because I think for so long, I've always been told I was a chatty Cathy. I used to get teased so much for like talking. My parents would always tell people in Jamaican accents, oh, she talked too much, you know, things like that. And it's like, I always was trying to diminish that part of me. I'm a very personable person. I think I'm charismatic. And I didn't really find the space where I created 
that I felt like I had ownership over that. So for me, Dreams and Drive was really like my baby in the sense that I created this and it comes from my voice and it's really people listening to me and all like in the purest form of the word, they're listening to me every week. They're not watching me, they're listening to me. And I think that distinction is something that I find a lot of power in. And I'm really excited about how I can use this voice to tell stories, continue telling stories. And I think it also has helped others, I think, find their voices as well. I know that may sound a little bit weird, but I think through the telling of stories, through the asking of questions, through hearing other people's stories, it unlocks something within each listener. And it's something unique. I think everybody listens to things differently and they take away different things from each episode. And for me, being able to be like a curator of that is just really exciting. Career-wise, it allowed me to also meet people, all these cool guests I have on the show. Yeah, like, you do. You got a lot of cool guests on the show. Jennifer Lewis, like, would right. I ever get to talk to Jennifer Lewis from any other platform? Like right now, I just learned so much from them as well. And I think it also has helped me build like just my personal brand of one thing, wanted to have a media network. Like this is going to be the, a critical stepping stone in that part of the journey. Talk to us about, like, for example, there are people right now who want to start their show and they're not sure if there's an audience that wants to listen to them, right? Let's talk about that. Like, I am at the point where I feel like you can start your show and you never know who's going to listen to your show. Like, there's going to be so much empty space out there. There's so much room to grow. Talk to us about that and finding your niche and finding your audience and, you know, your show just growing and you being unapologetic about that. So I think because I was kind of in that entrepreneurial lifestyle space already, I could observe who the big players were. And me and you talk about this a lot. Like Lewis House was one of like my biggest inspirations. Yeah, I love his show. Um, his school of greatness. And I realized, you know what? Lewis House is here. He has millions of listeners, a huge audience. So that means, number one, people are interested in these topics. And there probably are people who are not like, what's the word? Like when you are settling for Lewis House. But there probably are people who are settling for his content because the content they want that may be more, even more niche is not yet available. Mm. So listen, like, look at me. I'm a black woman listening to his house, but he doesn't always have people who are look like me or who have come from my background. So maybe there is a segment that I could steal from his audience, right? I know that they're listening to it. I see it in blogs. I see it in Facebook groups. That's not the market research, right? You have to try to get into those communities and start asking questions. So when I launched Dreams and Drive, I made it a campaign. So I didn't just like put it out there with no plan. I definitely had a campaign that I started. I want to say I had a survey that I sent to my email list from my blog before that I put on social media. What are your biggest challenges? What do you listen to? Stuff like that. So I was beginning to collect data. And then also, I think the thing is, is sometimes people don't know they need you. Mm, That's a okay. big thing that I, I like that realized. point. Sometimes people don't know they need you. So if you feel like what you, an idea that you have isn't yet there, then that's the perfect opportunity, right? There weren't that many other podcasters doing what I was doing specifically. So I'm like, you know what? They don't know they need me yet. But I'm going to make them know about me, right? <laughs> I'm going to find them and I'm going to like, put it in their faces and, you know, use audiences, use my guest audiences to let people know that they need me. So that's something that I think really helped in the beginning. You have to just also remember that your specific voice is one that is going to be unique. Like no one is you and that's your power. So like when you started Docs Outside the Box, you didn't really see other people doing this in this specific way, right? And you had this experience, like you knew that you were not just a doc. And I think that if you have a feeling, more than likely, somebody else in the world, there's like how many billion people on earth? Like there's somebody else out there that wants what you can offer. And that's something that a lot of my guests have really taught me because they're all from different walks of life, different industries. And in the beginning, no one knew about them, but they were able to build a community or build a brand. And then people were able to to learn about them later. So I think that whole idea of no one is doing what I'm doing, like don't let that stop you because they don't know what you're doing now, but they will. Mm. You're making me have like chills down my spine. I love this. (laughs) You are amazing at storytelling. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right. Well, look, like one of your most recent episodes, you interviewed the uh, cast from the TV show, the hit TV show Power. This is the second year you did that, actually, right? Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know is at, since you have a podcast, you have certain benefits, right? That's whether your yeah, podcast. Yeah. yeah, whether your podcast is about mathematics or your podcast is about entrepreneurship or your podcast is whatever. Like there's certain benefits that come with that. Can you let the audience know about this? Um, about just getting press or just about the different benefits you can leverage? Yeah, like let's talk about the press. Let's talk about that episode where you interview them and then go from there. So what I think that a lot of people who are non-media professionals who start podcasts don't realize is once you start a podcast, you now have created a media platform, right? So you as a doctor, right? You may not have known that oh, a podcast is now considered some sort of like journalistic endeavor, meaning that people that you feature or anyone that you bring on your show, they are seeing this opportunity as press, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, because I was in the lifestyle space, you know, I'm interfacing with people from like different types of entertainment and media companies. I knew that like publicists or talent, which you can call guests or talent, right? They want opportunities to tell their stories. And there are so many different things that you can pitch in a lot of these conferences. You can get access to conference as media, right? You can get access to press junkets, which is why I went to a power press junket, which basically is like a preview event for the show before it premieres. It's so easy. That's why I tell people like, it's funny, I'm going on a tangent here. I tell people like, if you want to meet people, just start a platform and do interview series because you can literally get anywhere if you are helping other people build their brand, right? All these actors and actresses at the end of the day, they want to build their brand the same way that you want to build your brand. And having a media platform is probably like in 2018, it's the best way to do that. So for that power junket, because this is, once again, I have to just preface it. I was already in the industry before. This is where I learned. This is how things work. I was on like a stars press list. I was getting every time they had new episodes, I would get the synopsis and the trailers and all that stuff. And I just said, hey, you know, is there an opportunity to interview the cast? And they were like, oh, yeah, we're having a press junket. Do you want to go to that? And I was like, "Okay." Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And they said it was going to be roundtable interviews. And so in my head, I thought that meant like I was going to interview the cast one on one. It was going to be on TV like you see on like YouTube if you were to uh, YouTube, like any of those press junkets. So I went in there with this expectation that I was going to be interviewing Omari Hardwick and Lala. And it wasn't like that. They were at a table. There were other people there. It wasn't the experience that I saw, but I realized, wait, like I could pitch my platform, tell what it is, label it as media, right? Kind of make it, hype it up a bit. And people would still see my platform as a vehicle for getting their story out there. So that's how I got invited to the press junket the first year. And I just followed up, right? I kept those contacts, made sure I was on the list so that this time around, I got the invitation for Mm. this press junket. And it's funny because a lot of the other outlets that were there, they weren't necessarily big outlets, right? There is room for smaller outlets, which I think a lot of people just discredit themselves in the beginning. They think, oh, I'm small. I can't put myself out there. They won't ever want me. Listen, these people want anybody. The more numbers, the more blogs they can get on, the happier their job as publicists or the more successful they'll be. So of course, they'll have their heavy hitters. But the little guys also matter as well because you're also exposing their show to a niche audience, which is why I think a lot of people just discredit themselves. But listen, niche is winning in 2018. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other benefits that you've gotten from podcasting? I know at one point you went to the Roots event, but that was a great episode in itself. You were able to hack that. Oh, you remember all this stuff. I just, so that's another thing. I think it's not even podcasting so much, but I think because I had a platform, it was credibility. So I really wanted to go to the Roots 100 gala that they have annually in New York City. And I didn't get an invite. And I was like, you know what? There must be an invite link. Let me just Google the Route 100 RSVP invite link. And I found it. They didn't make it private. And I RSVP for myself, right? And I think because whoever was checking it, they must have assumed 
that if the person RSVP, they got the link. So they sent me my confirmation I was in there. So I think, you know, events, going to events is another benefit, going to conferences. A lot of conferences have media passes for free. So you can get into some big conferences if you're willing to do coverage. And nowadays, coverage can mean social media coverage. It can mean blog posts. It doesn't have to be necessarily directly on your platform. But people always want to know that there's someone in representation that has an audience that's going to share it. I've been able to drive cars for free. Yeah, I've seen that. (laughs) You've been driving some Mazda cars. I love it. Yeah. So that's working with brand partners. That's something else that I think is because I have a platform, it's credibility. They're seeing that I'm building something. They want to be part of it. I've been able to have clients still build out a consulting arm, build revenue, monetization. There's so many good things that have come from this podcast that in 2016, January 2016, I would not even have imagined. I love it. I love it. Now, give us, um, you know, for the listeners who are getting ready to start a podcast or for the listeners who've already started a podcast and they're just not seeing the growth that they want to see, give us one tip one that they can use to get their podcast accelerated, get it to another level, get the downloads that they want. Give us something good. That's a hard one. Cause you know, I'm, I'm have all the tips. It really depends. But I think the one thing is you really have to understand your audience or you have to understand what is it that they really want to get out of your show. So, you know, I think we did this, ask your audience, like, what is it that you enjoy the most? What are your challenges? I always say, if you know what your audience's challenges are, Build content that helps them beat those challenges. That's the number one thing. Like if you can help someone fix a problem, that's like the biggest tenant of sales. Good sales people help you fix your problems. So I'm not saying you should see yourself as a salesperson, but you have to see yourself as a problem solver. So if you can find ways for you to help solve people's problems, they will share your content, right? If you're able to, and I know I'm being all like, Touchy feely, but I feel like if you're able to touch someone's heart, you're able to inspire a feeling inside them, that's what's going to fuel action. And for podcaster, actions mean downloading, sharing, or talking about it in some way. So I think when I was on Dr. Wendell Cole's podcast, oh, yeah, convos with Dr. Cole. Yes, I was like, what is it that you want people to feel after they hear your episode? That's something that I think a lot of people are just. I don't want to say all podcasters, but I think a lot of new podcasters aren't really thinking about what is the vision? What is the goal? What is the community they're trying to build? But I think if you really focus in on that and really know at the end of the day, you're not here for yourself. If you want to have a show for yourself, you could just talk to yourself in the bathroom, right? (laughs) Right. Your show is for other people and it's to inspire people to take some kind of action or to have some kind of feeling. So that's number one. I think also knowing your metrics. So understanding where are your downloads coming from? What type of shows are actually doing well? Really understanding the technical, logistical stuff, although it may not be sexy, can definitely help take you another step forward. Also, I think number three is you have to promote your show. So promoting can mean a lot of things. So whether that means getting on other people's podcasts, whether that means investing in social media, whether that means creating assets that you can actually put out there on social media, you have to invest in the promotion because that whole thing of make it and they will come is not true. Like you need to make it and then go out there and sell it, go out there and like tell people about it. The 80-20 rule, 80% promotion and 20% content is so true, especially in the beginning of any show because there's a lot of shows out there. If you go on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, like you can find a show about anything. So you have to make sure that you're creatively thinking about ways that you can get your show out there to new people and more people. Love it. I love it. Thank you so much for those tips. Now we're getting towards the end of the interview. So this is going to be some fast fire, quick fire okay, questions. Okay, you down? Okay. You down? Okay. <laughs> What's one piece of tech that you can't live without right now? Oh, look, I'm holding up my phone. (laughs) My phone. I love my phone. You know, I'm not a tablet person. I don't have like a Kindle or whatever, but I definitely feel like my phone is my lifeline. It just helps me keep track of everything. I'm a calendar person for real, for real. I'm obsessed with my Apple iPhone. (laughs) Now, how are you able, like give us a life hack that you're using to balance, you know, your nine to five with what you're doing from, you know, at nighttime with guests, all these different things. Like, how are you able to keep all that stuff balanced? 
I live by Google Calendar. So if it's not on my calendar, I probably won't do it. So I really try to stay as organized as possible. And another thing is I keep everything with me. So although I have a nine to five, although I have a personal life, although I have a podcast, I keep my laptop in my trunk just in case because you never know. So for me, it's like squeezing in time when I have downtime. So let's say I am at my grandma's house and we're just watching TV. I'll take out my laptop and offer edit an episode. So because I have limited time, I have to make the use of my dead time as much as possible. And I think for me, it's also like taking days off. So on the weekends, Saturday specifically, I don't really do as much podcast stuff. I only limit my podcast recording days to certain days of the week. I have to be very methodic about how I'm doing everything. I also have processes and systems in place so that I'm not like a hamster without a head every time a new episode is supposed to go up. I know what has to get done. I have developed expectations for myself. And now it's like, okay, Nana, you know the deal. You know what we got to do. Get it done so that you can stick to the schedule that you have. So I think that's been the biggest thing. Love it. Having a schedule and open to being flexible. Now, you've gotten a chance to interview some really great guests. Jennifer Lewis was an amazing guest. I mean, you're really getting some heavy hitters. Give us, um, what's the one, you know, dream guest that you would love to have on your show? Ah, so I make this list like every day. So I'm always <laughs> having new dream guests. The first one that comes to my mind is Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> oh yeah, the rapper. Yep. Because, hear me out, this is why I like him. Because I think he's somebody who's very committed to the art of making his music. And I think to have such great work, I think his music is really good. I would love to get inside his head, like what goes into like creating music? Because you have to make a lot of bad music in order to get that one good song. Mm -hmm. And so that has just been something that has been really on my mind lately is like talking to artists about the whole creative process, because it's just really interesting to me. And then just the whole business behind making music. I think music is just one of my like, I wouldn't say I'm a music head, but I definitely appreciate it. So he's been someone, Michelle Obama, because we both went to Princeton, both mm -hmm. a sociology major. I would love to have her on the show. I actually did email her people and they did email me back. They told me no, but hey, it's a start, right? It's a Absolutely. start. Absolutely. But look, yeah. uh, Raina, thank you so much for your time. I know you got a short period of time, so I don't want to take too much of that. So thank you so much for being on the show. Listen, obviously, in order to get to your show, the best way is www.dreamsanddrive.com. But to let the audience know the other different ways that they can, one, find your show, get in contact with you. All right. So Dreams and Drive is available on all platforms, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, any of your favorite podcast apps. You can definitely search Dreams and Drive and find it there. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we are Dreams and Drive across the board on all those platforms. And I also have my own personal page. I feel like I've been debating if I should combine the two. Combine it. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, you can talk about that another time. But, um, <laughs> my personal page is, it's like a screen name I've had since I was in high school. It's Rain Shine Love. It's R-A-I-N-S-H-I-N-E-L-U-V. And that's where I just post like more personal things, things going on with me, things that right now, it's still part of the Dream and Drive brand, but I see me, like if you want to know about the host, Raina, then you go to that page. And if you want Dreams and Drive only content, then you can check out the Dreams and Drive social platform. Love it. Thank you again for your time. Let's do it again. Thank you, Nee. And I really appreciate all the support you have given me over like, you know, the past few months, but we've known each other. It really goes a long way. And I feel like for anyone listening, support a friend, support a fellow hustler support your fellow docs outside the box because that's really the fuel on the days when you are just feel like giving up, right? It's knowing that somebody out there believes in you, knowing that somebody out there is being impacted by you. And a lot of times we as creators don't always know, right? We're like, does anyone really care about this? So getting that DM, getting that social media shout out. It really does mean a lot. So I would just say, tell someone you support them today because you may be inspiring them just as they have inspired you. And that's a wrap. Once again, I really want to thank Raina Campbell for coming on the show. She really dropped a lot of gems and I hope you all learned a lot from her, particularly those 
who are interested in starting their own podcast or anything that you want to put content out there and you're not sure exactly how people will take it, people will receive it. Obviously, you've gotten some inspiration from Raina Campbell, so you know what time it is. It's time to go out there and go ahead and start and do not use any more excuses. If you want to learn more about Raina, if you want to learn more about Dreams and Drive, make sure you listen to Dreams and Drive anywhere you find your favorite podcast. It's Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio. You could also find it on the web at www.dreamsindrive.com or you can follow Raina at Dreams and Drive on Instagram or at Rain Shine Love. So look, I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. But before I jet, remember one thing. We only got one life. Let's make it count and live outside the box. Peace.